Hey, look at the one. That one you just got filled. Remember there? So you can see it. And we'll be able to get everything done quickly. It's like setting. You got to get them in both. It's really right in the gathering. You got to set up. So you can see it. Make sure you're ready. I got you. So then we'll try the water. We'll just take a step and go back. You try the water. Grab the water.
why don't you enter me? All right, Tim. Tim. Everything you wrote down was correct. 
So Rabiel, we have you living at uh, 5627 North Carlaw, correct? Hey Rabiel. Nope. Hey, Andrea. Your microphone's on mute, so I can't hear you. How you doing, Lauren? How you doing, Matt? Albero? Perfect. How are you? Hey, Tom. Hey, Lauren. Hi, Tom. How are you? Oh, 
Uh, I see four. I didn't snap that word though. Yeah. camera and show you guys what we got going on in Chicago. All right. So <laughs> oh, yeah. this is how this is how we got going on in Chicago today. Um you can see that but there's white stuff coming from the sky. <laughs> so it's it's snowing. It's the official first snow of uh of, of the winter here I guess. Yeah. Snow problem. Snow problem. All right, so we're here. We're here live in the snow today, guys. Well, good morning. I'm going to start out today um, uh, with a little pop quiz. So I don't know who is live, who's paying attention to the group me, um, but uh, this is a basically like a, a, a group me sort of question. If you're in group me, you might notice. If you weren't in the group me, no cheating, no looking, no, no look. looking in the group me. All right, pop quiz. Who made the first sell? On Sunday, who made the first sale on Sunday? Ashley Mazza. Was it Megan? We got all right. We got Ashley Mazza from Reich. We got Ashley Mazza from Reich. We got Megan Faith. We're gonna go to the virtual world. Yeah, I go to Ashley. Ashley. Ashley, we got Ashley. Make it full screen so we can see everybody bigger. Austin. So so far, everybody voted on girls. First of all, all females. Dalton. Again. Dalton said, Melissa, who do we got on the screen? Who else said it? Uh, they figured it out. So the answer to the pop quiz is Melissa. Melissa. So it was kind of 
like a trick question because she snuck in there and uh, met with a client like really late on Saturday night and uh, her deal ended up closing like probably like 2 a.m. So technically, that's the first sale on Sunday, right? So, so um, who made the second sale on Sunday? Ashley Miza. Ashley Miza. Good. Hey, let's keep it going. Who made the third sale on Sunday? Austin. Who made it? Austin. Austin. Reich said Austin. You guys agree with that? Austin, Megan. Was Austin or Megan? It was Austin. Austin. Who made the fourth sale on Sunday? Yeah, if you pretty much guessed everybody's name by now. So it was Megan. It was Megan. So shout out to the four ladies to set us off on Sunday. Hats off. Salute to you guys for sure. Way to go. Uh, way, way to go. Um, we had uh, 10 families that we served yesterday. 10 families. Uh, so amazing job to everybody. Uh, the weekend warriors, give a shout out to, to them. Um, out of them, 10 families, six of them were served by the females in the agency and four by the guys. So we're already starting. These ladies were saying, we're just going to be a lady takeover. It's already starting, guys. So I don't know if you want to hurry up and get back on your horse and try and, you know, catch up here but but i love it love what i'm seeing from everybody uh and, and great work over the, over the past week past it past weekend and we close out the month with a bang guys we did ten thousand dollars on a sunday to end the month so shout out to everybody on that That's some agency highlights for you for the week. great 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 job uh let me get to the notes here i just gotta keep turning the page here we go okay all right, so the company, um, the, the slogan, as we know, next year is what? Thrive. That's the company's slogan. Next, slogan next year is Thrive. And I just love how, how uh, they, they stole what we've been saying for the last four months. Because we've been saying that, you know, when this pen pandemic came, our company didn't just try and survive this, this situation. We've been able to, to turn the table and thrive and grow. We've had our biggest seven months recorded ever in company history. The last seven months are the biggest seven months ever recorded in company history. Um, so we're going to see what happens here. Uh, we still have uh, till, till Wednesday to get all of our business sent off for the month and then the reports are going to come out. But everything's shaping up to look like uh, October uh, for us and for the company um, is going to be our biggest month that, that, that we've had. So it's looking really strong right now. Hopefully all the numbers end up on the reports just like we're looking for. Um, so uh, announcement, quick announcement, guys, December 5th, December 5th, we are going to have our agency uh, Christmas party. So if you can be here, it's going to be in uh, Chicago. So if you can come, if you can be here, it's a Saturday. Uh, probably going to do it at the office just so where we can accommodate everybody unless I can find a good you know, restaurant with social distancing and everything to allow us to do that, uh, you know, but what I want to do regardless is set up some sort of at least virtual happy hour. I mean, you don't got to sit on the virtual call for four hours with everybody during a party, but like we should at least set like one hour of the party is going to be like a virtual happy hour where everybody can hop on the video strap and uh, yeah, yeah. We'll just strap a camera right to Geo and you could just watch him walk around all day. <laughs> uh, head cams. Um, the other thing is, has anybody seen the, the sports going on? Uh, the um, Major League Baseball, uh, the World Series, right? The World Series is going on right now. Where are they playing the World Series at? Globe Life Field. That's our parent company. How, how about that? All the companies in the world where we can be, right? During all this stuff going down, we're trying to grow our business we're hosting the World Series. So uh, anybody questions you on what company you work for, just ask them if they heard of the World Series and tell them to tune into the game and you'll see us all over the place, right? So there's some good, you know, uh, good publicity for uh, us as well. Um, but uh, with that being said, what was I going to mention to us? I, I was going to mention something about uh, the growth of the company. What was it? Thriving. Thriving, yeah, with that and this huh? Yeah, yeah. So, so um, today, uh, what I wanted to do today was I wanted to give some highlights from last week, some highlights from last week, and uh, announce what we're going to be doing for uh, November as well. So, for um, October, pretty much wrapped up. November is here. Today is the first month of no, or first day of November. 
So today is the official first day of November. We're kicking off November today. And I had to tell the managers this morning, I said, for most people, they're going to be confused when we say this because they're going to look at their calendar. What do you mean today's November? Last time I checked, it's November. It's October 26th. We didn't even go trick-or-treating yet. So how could it be November if I didn't even go trick-or-treating in October? So for the real world, yes, it is October 26th and it is still October. But for us in our business, today is the first day for November. Today's the first day of November. And we're doing that, so it's going to give us five full weeks in November. So this is an opportunity for everyone to maximize their bonus for the month of November. And um, the last week of the month is going to be a huge push week. So we're going to go completely off the charts that week. We're going to give it all we got. We're going to lay it all on the line. And, and we're going to turn all of our business on Monday, November 30th. And that's going to end our month. And then we're going to go into December. And, and the way December works out pretty nice, the way the, uh, the holidays shape up for us, Christmas and New Year's, the way they shape up, it allows us to get three full weeks in, in November. I mean, in December, I'm sorry. And, uh, and then we're going to be able to kick off the new year uh, on December 28th. So we're going to be able to get a jump start on the new year as well. So there'll be like sort of two months in a row. We're going to be able to start and get a jump start on the following month. So we got that all planned out. We also got all next year planned out next year, 2021. It's written. It's in the books. Now it's going to be us to step into our destiny and execute uh, the game plan that we put in place. If we uh, are able to, in fact, not if, but when, when, we, when we collectively as a team, guys, when we do this, if we execute what we want to do next year, I didn't just come up. We didn't just come up with some game plans to do 10% growth or to do some small numbers. The game plans that we put in place are to break every record that the company has ever seen. We will be the fastest and only agency ever to do over $5 million in a year in their first full calendar year from starting from scratch. And when they do that and they put it in the history books, they're going to also put an asterisk, but it's going to be a good asterisk, not the bad asterisk like Barry Bonds is going to get. I'm talking about the good asterisk. It's going to say, by the way, it was during a global pandemic, right? And we're going to put our names on that. Everybody here is going to be able to walk into the Hall of Fame of this company. You're going to cement your name into the history of this company forever as the baddest team to ever go down. And we're going to leave no stone unturned. And, 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 and we're, not going to, we're going to leave everybody in the dust. And we're not going to look back. Next year is going to be the year. So this was our foundational year. And I get chills even thinking about it because I know the players that we have, the people that we have, the goals that we have. And, and, and what's scary is that if I add up everybody's here, everybody's goals for what they want to get accomplished next year, it is way bigger than what the numbers that I just said, way bigger than that. So if we all just focus on collectively accomplishing all of our goals, we're going to blow that out of the parks and, and we will be solidified in, in, in the history books here uh, in this company, in this great company. So, um, so I just want to you know, get everybody excited about that. And uh, just congratulate you. We're at the best place we could possibly be right now um, in, in our careers and, 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 and to take our families to the next level. So um, some quick highlights though. Last week, we had some people who went out and did some phenomenal things. Before I do that though, we had somebody this uh, past week, that past month, hit their five year anniversary with the company. Five year anniversary. When you hit your five years, you also get a plaque. So this should be coming in the mail. You should get one of these things right here. Let me move it. Let's see, if I, see if I got one for you, Gio. No, these, these aren't ones for you yet. But Gio's going to get one of these in the mail for his five years. But give it up for Gio for hitting his five years. Woo! 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 You, guys, you guys know what that means? What does five years mean in our business? 50%. I start hearing it. I start hearing it. It means 50%. 50% what? Vested. Vested. 50% vested in your residual income. So five more years. Five more years, you're 100% vested. 
And when you're 100% vested, that means you own all of your residual income and you can literally leave the company and they have to pay you 100% of that. While Gio's here right now, let's say Gio's getting four grand a month. Well, while he's here, they're going to pay him all 4,000 a month. Can you turn that music off? And then after, uh, if he leaves right now, they're going to send him what? 50% of that. So if he left right now, he'd only get two. But while he's here, he gets what? Four. All four. So while you're here, you get all, all of your income, all of it. But if you leave, it's, it's how many years vested that you are. So that's why 10 is the magic number. So if you're here, 10 years, the average income is between eight and $12,000 is the average after 10 years. Mine was 18,000 after 10 years. So uh, you walk away, you can take all of that with you forever, right? So that's a big reason why, why we're here. Um, and, and, you know, I was giving some highlights to the, uh, for, for the agency for the week, but just as a reminder, you know, they send us these plaques and we've gotten one of these plaques every single month that we've been here so far. So give it up to everybody here for all this bringing it every single month. Great job, guys. Cool. Well, great job on that again. Want to remind it. But last week, here's some highlights. And if I missed somebody, uh, you know, I apologize. I've just a couple to come out that, that stuck stuck out stuck out to, to, to me and the team. Um, we had last week, we had Blake and Elise make a, a hundred or 1,100 plus phone calls uh, from that camp. So Blake and Elise, great job uh, last week on that one. Uh, they were blowing up the phones, blowing up the phones. Uh, Drew, how many phone calls you guys put up? You and your team? Between Drew and his trainees, they put up 1,250 phone calls for the week. So those are our phone call warriors. Big highlights, big plays out there. We had last week, we made a play call on, on uh, Thursday. You guys remember on Thursday, we made a quick play call. We said, you know what? If, if they're telling us that if you book an appointment on the same day and you see that client on the same day, the chances of selling them go up through the roof, right? And then they're telling us that if you sit down with somebody at nine o'clock, the chances of selling them go where? Through the roof. So if you book a same day, and that same day is 4, 9 p.m. I mean, what do you think is going to happen? Yeah. Right? So, so we tried that last week. We just ran the play call. Some people were able to really execute. Some people weren't able to. Uh, but the people that were got some sits. And um, I want to give a shout out to Andreas. Andreas is the first one to make his same day, same sit, prime day sale. He made that play call. And he sold it out first. Now, with that being said, that's that's going to be our go-to. You know, every Monday, every Thursday, whenever we're done on the phones, have that prime time appointment set up. We're already here. We're already ready to go. Might as well knock one of those out real quick. You're going to get two extra sits on a weekly basis, at least one extra sale. There's 50 extra sales a year. 50 sales times what? 1,000 ALP. There's 50,000 ALP. There's an extra 25,000 bucks right? Just for working two extra hours a week, one extra hour on a Monday, one extra hour on a Thursday, make an extra $25,000, right? Wow. So that's, 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 that's what we're going to be start moving towards on that. So great job for Andreas. And tonight I'm looking forward to seeing some big plays happen. You know, what I wanted to do is do a contest and say the first time that we write 10,000 on, on a, on a call night, like from those 9 PM appointments, we'll, um, uh, we'll, we'll either give a, a bunch of money away or, We'll take everybody out to a dinner, but I wanted to do some contest around that. I didn't get it figured out yet, but we're definitely going to do something fun. The first time that we hit 10,000 from those 9 PM same day sits. And I know it's right. It literally might be tonight or Thursday night. I feel it. I feel like we're, we're all rocking and rolling right now. Fresh leads are going to be coming out today as well. So, you know, if you got your phones, get them charged up, get them ready to go. Um, okay. So how about this last week? We had Reich coming in at the buzzer beater with 3,500 and Vince followed up with another 800 on the buzzer beater last night. So shout out to you guys on the buzzer beaters for the week. The buzzer beaters. How about top on referrals for the week? Who do you think it was top on the referrals for the week? No one had some last week, but he wasn't the top. It was me. It was Reich. Yeah. 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 
<laughs> you might have sold two referrals, but this is referrals collected. Ah, yeah. But great job on those two referral sales, contingent beneficiaries. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. so Reich, Reich is Reich's big one, the contingent beneficiaries. He's probably picking up one or two sales a week just off of that alone right now. So if you're missing out, you can scoop up one or two sales a week just by running, running that play call on those contingent beneficiaries for sure. So, so the top on referrals this week though is Blake and Elise. Blake and Elise, great job, guys. Yeah. The biggest play maker of the week though, out there, uh, just you see every single day she's making plays. Um, over eight thousand dollars. This would put her on the wall of fame. Okay, the wall of fame would go to Ashley Miza. Oh, like our highlights for the week next week we need like some good like sports center music going on for that when we do the highlights from now on right you know so so um so just a couple quick things and we'll be able to wrap up for the month last month we ended up going uh for two hundred thousand, uh and we ended up a little bit short looks like we're probably going to be you know our goal was to do fifty thousand a week you know, and we were floating right around 40,000 a week for, for, for the month on average. But we, we averaged around 30, probably around 38,000, 35 to 38,000 a week when you figured out our average. So we really wanted to be at 50. We ended up a little bit short around 37, 38. But nonetheless, we had a great, amazing, amazing effort for, from everybody, uh, really. And um, so, uh, you know, we did not hit the 200,000 for the Arizona trip. Uh, but when the reports come out, uh, you know, we were supposed to do 150 for the dinner and anybody over 10 K gets dinner. Everybody with five for four personals gets dinner. Uh, we're probably going to still end up doing the dinner, even though we were a little bit short on the 150, uh, just cause I, I like to get everybody together and, you know, uh, I just like to have a reason to, to go out and have some fun with you guys. All right. So we're going to go do that for sure. If you're, if you're virtual, um, you know, if I come to Pittsburgh, we'll go out. If, uh, if, if you want to come to Chicago, Hey, we're definitely come. We'll, we'll love to have you here, but um, we'll send you, we'll send you, we'll send you and a guest somewhere great uh, to get a nice, nice dinner for the night on, on, on us, on the agency uh, for, for your month last month. So um, definitely we still got that coming to you. Here's what I forgot to say that I was going to tell everybody. So these, these baseball games are going on and, and you look in the background and there's no real people. You know what there is? There's cardboard cutouts of people sitting in the stands. Anybody see that? Oh, yeah. I, I, I know I, some, some people might not have seen all that. I thought it was kind of cool. At least it makes it look like someone's there. They're pumping in fake sound into the stands and everything. The NBA had screens where live people were there, right? So for us, we have screens like for the meeting right now, everybody's on the screen and we can see you, you guys can see us. But what I want to do is, is <laughs> Gio is laughing at me a little bit about this, but, but let me know what you guys think, okay? Um, what I'd like to do is for everybody that's virtual, I'd like to get a cardboard cutout of you <laughs> and, and put you in the room here with us so we can put you in the stands. Because, you know, right now, I mean, look at this. We've got some spots here, right? Right behind Josh, we can put some people here. We can, Danny's sitting by himself. I'm sure he'd probably like to have a cardboard cutout next to him. <laughs> So um, what we're going to do is we're going to set up a system where, you know, once, is that the camera good? Oh, I got to fix that. Once, here we go. Once our agents, you know, uh, for a month, hit like a certain number, boom, you're going to get a cardboard cutout. We're going to keep you in the office. Okay. Uh, and then the other idea was that I was going to get cardboard cutouts of everybody here and then mail them to your house. And then you guys just have like 40 cardboard cutouts just sitting in your living room or in your, in your office there too. <laughs> so, but if you do want a cardboard cutout of Geo, I could get one made and just have them there. And every day when you come home, you can just sit there to, to reach you. <laughs> All right. But, but, but yes, we're definitely doing a cardboard cutout just so you know, it's a real thing and we're going to do it. If the, N if the NFL and the major league baseball can do it, we, we can do it. So, uh, so you guys know this past weekend, Khabib, uh, Khabib fought, and I don't know, we got, we, we got a lot of, 
uh, fighting fans here, UFC. So the UFC had a, a fight on Saturday, and one of their prime fighters, his name is, is Khabib. I can't pronounce all of his, his, his name. It's a long one. He's Russian. He was uh, undefeated, 29-0, and 0, and um, he made an announcement when he was done. What was his announcement? Retired. He retired. He retired, right? And after he, he won, it was, he was really emotional. He won a lot of fights, beat, beat people, some major fights, and never was emotional after his fight. But after this fight, he was really emotional. Anybody know why? His dad died. Dad just died, right? Was there any doubt in your mind that this dude was going to lose this fight? No way. No. Like, if you were a betting person and you just knew that he just lost his father, I mean, pretty much a no-brainer. It's like easy money, you know? I, I didn't have a chance to put any money on it, but, you know, if I could get, get a hold of a bookie or something, I probably would have. <laughs> it was that much of a seal of a deal. You know, and he was playing with a chip on his shoulder. He had something inside of him that that other person did not have inside of them. And that's really what won the fight, you know. And, and I looked at his net worth. Uh, anybody know Khabib's net worth? Not a lot. 10 mil. Oh. 10 mil? He won in 2019, I think, $16 million of total prize money. Um, his total net worth right now is reported to be $30 million. 30 million and he wants to retire so i'm like what kind of lifestyle can khabib live off of 30 million yeah, right that's a lot of money in russia <laughs> <laughs> how many russian dollars many i don't know how many russian dollars is it <laughs> lots of rubles is that what it is? Yeah. rubles rubles okay we're learning stuff today so is it rubles in russia there we go that's what they have in russia rubles well, 30 million. Now, now, I want everyone to know this. So in your lifetime, from now until forever, you understand money, you know, really what it's worth and what you can get out of it. OK, so so um, when you retire, you can live off of three percent of whatever you retire off of. Right. Three percent. So that means if I have a million dollars, I can probably live off of 30 grand a year. Right. So. That means that I got to take 30 grand times 30, and that's essentially what this guy can live off of. You know, so what is that? It's about 900 grand. Does that seem right? It's 2,285,000 rubles. Yeah, we're not doing this in rubles, we're doing this in dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Drew figured out rubles. Okay. But, rubles. Yeah, yeah. So, so is everybody following the math? Yes. Sorry. The great thing about this company is, is, is somebody came to me one time. I don't know if I told you guys this before, but they asked me, they said, man, do you have to be good at math to do this career? Like Tommy, to like, I'm like not really good at math. So I don't know if I'm going to be good at this job. And I was like, uh, I was like, well, can you divide by 12? <laughs> if you can divide by 12, you'll be all right over here. We, we, can, we can work with you on that, right? This is not rocket science, Danny. This is not brain surgery, <laughs> right? This is pretty, pretty straightforward stuff. So, so what we're going over today is, is if you have a million dollars, you can retire with 3% a year, which would give you about 30 grand a year. Well, this, this gentleman has 30 of those. Right, so he has 30 million and he can do that for $30,000. So he can retire with $900,000 a year for the rest of his life, okay? That's how you figure that out. Now you think, you think Khabib's gonna be cool with that because Khabib's used to making how much a year? Oh, uh, yeah. You know, so you gotta think about that. And then really, if he does live off of that 900,000, 3% a year, what's inflation, guys? 3%. So that means the buying, so that means 20 years from now, he's still going to be living off of what? The same 900,000. 900, but 20 years from now, what's going to happen to the cost of things? Double. This could be double. Mm, Think about that, right? And what if he wants to pass that along to his kids 20 more years from then? It's really only going to be worth two twenty-five in buying power. Milk, eggs, and bread. He can only buy two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars worth of that stuff, right? So you have to take into consideration that. And and what's scary is really the number should be like one percent, but we're not going to go into all that right now. But I just wanted to bring that to your light. So you, when you look at the the, the American income life, you know if you see someone 
getting residual income of three of twenty five hundred dollars a month. Well, twenty five hundred. What's that? That's not that much money. But twenty five hundred dollars a month is thirty thousand dollars a year. And thirty thousand dollars a year. That would take you how much money to get that? A million dollars. You'd have to have a million dollars saved up in order to get $30,000 a year, $2,500 a, a month, right? So if you have someone in this company, like let's say Wright goes by a whole year here, right? What's your anniversary? Uh, I think it's June 17th. June 17th. So, so June 17th comes around. Now it's July and Reich only gets, which I'm going to bet you're going to get more than this, okay? Um, you're going to get $250 in residual income, okay? That's going to be more than this, but he's going to get $250. If Reich gets $250 a month in residual income after being here for one year, how much money would you have to have saved to, to, in order to achieve that? And I'll give you the answer. A million dollars gets you 2,500 a month. So a hundred thousand would get him $250 a month. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right. So basically if your uncle or your aunt or your mom or dad or your best friend has a hundred thousand dollars and they want to retire, they're probably going to be taking home out of that portfolio about $250 a month, maybe $300 a month for a hundred thousand dollars saved up. Wright's going to get $250 a month. And guess how much money he's going to have to have saved up? None. Isn't that crazy? If you work for another company, that's like having $100,000 in your 401k after one year. That's the power of residual income that a lot of people don't really realize when they're doing this. Maybe they didn't get the paycheck they wanted. Or maybe they didn't get the, the, the promotion or they, they were trying to really hit this goal and they missed this goal. And, and, and sure, short term maybe wasn't the, the, the biggest success, but your worst day here is someone's best day who's not earning residual income because they don't have an opportunity next week to change that. That's the best thing about this is next week, we have an opportunity to change that. If they had a bad paycheck this week, guess what they can look forward to next? The same thing. There's no opportunity to even change that. So, so that's some of the great stuff when you understand these numbers. Like when I hear people retire and then I, I, I immediately look up the guy's net worth and I immediately start crunching these numbers just to get an idea of like, okay, he could probably live off about 900,000 a year. Hopefully he got a good advisor and hopefully Khabib knows what he's doing over there, right? So just so you guys know how to break these numbers down, um, it really helps you get a good understanding of really what's, you know, what's going on. So um, I, I, I got two, I'm going to go one or the other. Should I read the book and then talk or talk and then read the book? Read the book and then talk. Read the book and then talk? Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, we'll do it. We'll do it. Way. We'll do it. Vince said we'll do it. We'll do it. Well, that way, because then like, we'll all get focused, and then you'll pick, us, you'll pick us right back up with the talking after that. All right. I was going to play a video, too, but but the video is boring, so uh, we're not going to play the video. Hope you guys hope you guys appreciate that. And we'll be out of here soon. This will be a quick one, guys, right? Oh, this book right here is the 177 Mental Toughness Secrets of the World Class. So we went over this before, but the guy named Steve Siebel um, it's the, the thought processes, the habits, and philosophies of the great ones. So he went and, and, and obviously you know, interviewed great people and got all kind of information. But he, he, the philosophy in the book is that there's, there's people that are, um, there's, there's low class, middle class, upper class, you know, high class, and then there's, there's world class. You know, and these talk about these world class people that just have world class thinking. And he finds that he found out that it's, it's all in mental toughness. It's kind of like, he's like, his, just this is the book, it's ain't me, but he's saying that the people that are in the lower class, they're just not as mentally tough as the people that made it to the middle class. And the people that are in the middle class are, 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 are not as mentally tough as the people that made it to the upper class. You know, an upper class that make it to the you know, high class. And then the, the world class though, the way you earn world-class success, which usually comes with world-class wealth you know the success is first 
the, 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 the symptom of being successful is being wealthy, right? But the way that you, you, you get to that world-class level where world-class is like, dude, that's like point, that's not even 1%. That's like 0.5% of the world, you know, 0.1%, like 1% of the population. How do you get to that 1%? How do you edge your way into that? And a lot of this book is all about just mental toughness, having that mental toughness in order to do that. You know, what happens is it gets so hard for someone that they would rather say, you know what? I don't want to go through that. I'd rather just stay in the middle class. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So it's, 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 that's kind of what he uses in this book as examples. But um, this is all the way at the end of the book. Um, he says this, he says that the good and the great are separated by a razor's edge. There's a book by Jim Collins. If you want to look it up, it's called From Good to Great. From Good to Great. And what he does in that book is he looks at all the companies that went from good to great, and he writes a book about it. So that's a side book. That's not really what this is about. Okay. There's also a quote that this agency was founded on. And it has the two words, good and great in there. And that's why it comes to my mind. But, but. The quote that this agency was founded on is, is, um, what is it? I mean, let me, I, I don't want to mess it up. Okay. But this is from the Pittsburgh Steelers wide receiver coach, coach Drake used to, um, give the wide receivers a quote, uh, every, every week. He's like the quote of the week guys is this. And every practice, he would just say the quotes to the receivers and Juju Schuster is a receiver for the Steelers. And um, uh, last year, right before the season started, uh, Coach Drake passed away. And the quote that he um, gave the wide receivers, the, literally like the day before he passed away, was um, never accept good when great is available. And they made um, wristbands and had that quote on it, right? And when I was thinking about the opportunity for us and how great of an opportunity this was here, I was good. I was good. I'm, I was good. You guys know I was pretty, as far as people good, I was better than good. You know what I'm saying? I was good. But I went over this and I just remember hearing that quote and I'm like, you never accept good when you have great that's right there and it's available for you so that's why i couldn't just stay in pittsburgh and accept being good and we have an opportunity for greatness and i had to step into that opportunity for us you know so anyways um i'll read this and i'll give us something i'll break this real quick so you know here's the, the thing that starts with though this is from a wrestling coach um he said desire plus sacrifice plus discipline equals preparation desire plus sacrifice plus discipline equals preparation preparation plus success equals confidence mental toughness plus pride equals perseverance so you really got to think about this stuff. Preparation plus success equals confidence. Think about it. If you prepare and then you're successful, you're going to gain more confidence. <clears throat> Mental toughness plus pride equals perseverance. That's how you persevere is by having mental toughness, but also what? Pride. Pride. Well, pride is not quitting. Persevere. If you, if you, if you want to do something and you did not persevere, what would be the reason why you did not persevere? You quit. You quit. That's the only way you lose in wrestling. The only way you lose is if you quit. Cause, cause I remember I went to my cousin. I was like, yeah, he was good. He won two, lost one today. My cousin's like, you don't lose in wrestling. You just learn. I'm like, ah, makes a lot of sense. So he really didn't lose anything this week. He didn't lose this week as long as he learned. So for us last week, Danny, all of us here, you didn't lose, right? Did you lose last week? No. No, you know why I know you didn't lose? Because you're still here. 
The only way you lose is what? Quit. Is if you quit, right? That's how you become a winner. Winners never quit, quitters never win, right? My son has, there's only one rule when he wants to wrestle. If you want to wrestle, you can wrestle all you want, but there's only one rule. You're not allowed to quit. It's not, that's the number one rule. You can do whatever you want, but you just can't quit. That's the only rule. And as long as you don't quit, son, you'll always be a winner. You'll always be a winner, always, you know? So man, what a great life lesson that wrestling can teach you. If you have confidence, here, let me finish the quote. If you have confidence and perse persevere, you will always have the edge. If you have the edge, you will succeed eventually. The edge, the edge, he's talking about the edge. Where do I get that edge? Where do I get that little bit of an edge? So average people tend to believe world-class performers are so superior. You'll see a top performer write all this business or something, and you'll think it's like they did something so superior it's, and so far out in front, and so, so, so smarter and more talented, and that there's just absolutely no way that you can become one of them. And that's not true. It's not even close to true. The truth is, as the evidence in this book suggests, there is really only a razor's edge separating the good from the great or the middle class from the world class. Granted, it's a razor's edge in so many different areas, a series of critical subsidies that make all the difference. The real question is the book presents in the middle class performers is this, is it possible for a person of average intelligence and modest means to ascend to a throne of world class? The answer is an enthusiastic yes, yes it is. Of course it's possible. The question is not of possibility. We know that it's possible. The question um, is of will, but of will. History has shown us the majority of people will not rise up and take the challenge. History has shown us the majority of people will not rise up and take that challenge. So we're talking about a minority of people that are fighting the good fight. Everybody else would rather relax and not, not go through all that stress and, and, and whatever it may cause to get there. History has shown us that, all right, uh, they could, they have the intelligence, the potential, but yet they won't. It's not because the lack of desire, but because they don't believe it's possible. So why are they saying this? They're saying the majority of people don't even try because they don't believe that it's possible. They're tired of being disappointed. They don't want to be disappointed again. They're tired of it. It's easier to simply turn on the television or engage in some other mind numbing activity. Now you could imagine this book was written. Okay. Uh, I don't even know when it was written. I wish I knew, but, but I already know when it was written because they're talking about television today. That word would be changed into what? Social media. social media people would rather turn their mind to, to, to turn their engaged to, into some other mind numbing activity like social media right so it's um could they alter their level of expectation and forge ahead you bet through language change and visualization they can artificially manufacture a higher level of expectation regardless of where they are now Again, the statistics say most people will never even attempt it. When you go pro, it's much easier to compete against amateurs. At the risk of sounding preachy, I have been both an amateur and a pro, and I highly recommend going pro. Emotionally and mentally, it's actually much more comfortable after you cross that barrier. How do you go pro? It's simple. You decide to, period. Then just go back through the process of this book with a highlighter and model your thought processes, habits, and philosophies of the great ones. So success is, is such a, a cool thing for uh, us because literally we can just do one thing and that's decide. We can decide. So talking about a razor edge, razor's edge. So then I went ahead and just did some more research real quick and, and found out, you know, what can this little bit do for you? Little bit can go a long way. I'm telling you, it's that one extra hour that can really make all the difference. That's like they say that 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 one extra rep, 
that you do at the gym. That's the, all the stuff that really makes a difference. So um, my advice to, to anybody that is young is to go all in, lay it all on the line. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. When I say all, you have to literally try and find ways to give all of you. And, and when you, you figure out at the end of the week, like, man, I gave it all, but you know what? I could have gave it more. We got to find out next week how to give it more than last week. But if you're not constantly trying to, to give everything you got, you have to try it. And you're not going to be good at giving all you got. Who's the best right now in this room at giving it all you got? How much do you do that? How often have you done that? Unless you have like 10,000 hours clocked in of giving it all you got all the time, then you're not a professional at giving it all you got, right? So you're not the last week you tried, but you probably didn't give it all you got because you don't even know how to give it all you got. But if you work at it, then you can find ways. Last week, I bet you if me and you sat down, I could probably find two hours right now where you didn't even give it all you got. I found two hours for you real quick, you know? You, you, if you examine your week, you're going to find areas where you could have given it more and given it all you got and given it all you got and invested everything you had. I gave this company and this business every single thing that I've had from my toes all the way to my head. And then when I gave everything I got, I made my mom give everything she got. I got my dad to give everything he got. And we had to give everything we got to this deal because I knew it was always going to pay it back. So if you're young right now, that's the best advice I can give you. It's, it's only going to get more expensive when you got uh, kids, when you got a family, your time is not going to be as easy to give up. Sacrifice it now. You're not missing anything. It's not even a sacrifice. It's just an investment that gives us paid back more. Sacrifice means you sacrifice. You never get that shit back. You put it into this, you're going to get it back tenfold. An hour of your free time right now gets you what? A Miller Lite at the bar. Okay. Right. An hour of your free time and later on, that's going to be your flight to Miami, bro, while you're sipping pina coladas. Does that make sense? What kind of hour do you want? A Miller Lite at the bar now or an hour flight to Miami anytime you want? You're like, hey, honey, it's Friday. What do you want to do? You know what? There's this restaurant in Miami and they got this crazy ceviche I really want to try. Honey, if you want ceviche from Miami, well, it's two o'clock. We could catch the five o'clock flight. We could be there. I could get us reservations for 830. How's that sound? Sure, babe. Let's book it up. And you're heading to Miami. Right. And then when you're 35, when you're 40, all your friends are going to be still doing the same place at the same bar. And they're going to wonder, how did you how do you how do you do that? Right. Because you sacrifice that. So. Go all in. There's nothing to lose and everything to gain. And by doing so and in, in working at it, you're going to slowly start getting that edge. The edge that they're talking about comes with working your butt off. That's really where it comes in. So um, they say that, you know, water, water will boil at 211 degrees, right? Water boils at 211 degrees. At 212 degrees, it turns to steam it'll 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 turn to steam steam is strong enough to power a locomotive a locomotive so if i have a locomotive and i put all the water in it and i get that thing hot 211 degrees what's going to happen to that locomotive Remove. nothing it's going to be a big hot pot of boiling water probably the biggest hot pot of boiling water just sitting around right not going anywhere at all. You turn it up one degree, literally one degree, what happens? It's able to power that train down the track. One degree makes all the difference. They, they did a study on um, golf. Drew's a golfer. The uh, Masters, the average winner of the, 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 the masters, uh, I think wins like almost eight times, whatever a guy in second place gets eight times what the guy in second place gets the average winner wins by less than three strokes for the last 25 years, less than three strokes throughout a whole tournament, four days. It's a four day tournament. It's a four day tournament. They play 18 holes four times in a row, right? 
they play 18 holes four times in a row and the average winner is literally like dude where 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 did he where did he get that one stroke that one team you all play golf we all played golf before most of us right <laughs> We know Wright got the putt like last week. He won 100 bucks on the putt there. Hey, so, hey. You know? so, um, so you think about that. Where did he get that at? Uh, then they then they went ahead to the gold medal, and um, they said that the, the from getting gold medal to no medal on uh, I forget what what, what what the race was. It was like the 100 meter dash or something like that. Uh, it was 0.7 seconds. Gold medal to no medal. 0.7 seconds. Like. Where do you get 0.7 seconds on that, right? That's just those little edges. It's all that little stuff. Then um, they, they, they did the Indianapolis 500. I think first place wins like 1.2. Second place wins like 600,000 on average or something like that. I don't know what the, what the numbers really were. But um, Indianapolis 500, the average margin of, of win, 1.4 seconds. 1.4 seconds. The, uh, what are the races with the horses? Everybody vote. Kentucky Derby. The Kentucky Derby, right? The average winner of a Kentucky Derby. You know how they win, They measure um, horse races? It's like hands, right, or something? No? Yeah, it's hands. It's hands. It's hands. Five, I think it was, the answer was five. When I looked it up, it was the average win was five, I think five hands. The number was five, okay? But it was it was five hands was the average winner of the Kentucky Derby. Like, think about how close that is. These horses running around, it comes down to that. So the, 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 the efforts, that one degree effort makes all the difference. That one degree of discipline, the one degree is the thing that separates first from, I mean, second place, that uh, if you want to get something you've never had, you have to do something that, that you've never done, right? If you keep doing the same thing over and over and, and expecting different results, that's, that's called what? Insanity. The definition of insanity, right? So we always got to be evolving and, and, and developing uh, so that we don't continue to do the same thing. We got to get better. And the two things are more efficient and really, you know, more, more effective. Um, so, so to close guys, to close this month, guys, um, is November. And for the month of November, uh, we're going to call this no excuses, November. I'm going to make it happen. So, what I'd like to do is I'd like everyone to proclaim your destiny. Say it out loud. Proclaim your, we're in, we're in desk plane. So the word out here is destiny. You know, we create our own destiny. This is the city of destiny. So we want to proclaim your destiny. And, and the, the way we're going to do that is by saying it out loud. Mm -hmm. What do you commit to happening in the month of November? What are you committing to happen for yourself and for the team? Like if I were to have it say, you know, right, you know, right. So I proclaim my destiny for the month of November. I'm personally going to make sure that, you know, I run six miles a week and, you know, uh, make sure that I, I uh, you know, cut out, you know, sugars or whatever you want to do for your personal health. He's going to personally, I'm going to read a book and run. And for the team, what I'm going to do this month for the team is I'm going to lead from the front. I'm going to recruit six people and I'm going to, I'm going to make sure I write at least 16,000, like whatever your number is. Right. And, you, and then you're going to say, you're going to say, and, and you know, what I'm going to do this because I'm not going to have any excuses. I will make it happen. Right. So what is everybody's goals for this month? I don't think we should leave this room. I don't think we should break. I don't think we should move forward into this month of November until we have a clear set destination of where we're gonna be at the end. Otherwise, every step that we take might not be in the right direction. Does that make sense? Like if you know, if you know where you're gonna be and you know where we're starting, then now I know where I need to direct 
my steps, my thoughts, my words, my actions, my course of action throughout the whole month all got to be set towards that, right? So I think the best way to do it is to let the team know what you are willing and down to do. So what, what, what we'll do is if, if everybody can, I'm going to ask you to proclaim your destiny in the group meet today. So I would make a quick video, or if you don't want to make a video, I'll accept you proclaiming it on text and writing it. All right. But um, I think if, if, if Vince hops in there, it would be great to see his face. Vince is going to hop in and just say, Hey guys, I'm going to proclaim my destiny for the month of November this month. I'm going to make sure that I, I'm at the office every day at 745 and I'm in bed by 12 o'clock because early to bed, early to rise, makes one healthy, wealthy, and wise. Wealthy, and wise. <laughs> healthy, <laughs> wealthy, and wise. Yeah. He just said wealthy and wise. What about the healthy part? Uh, <laughs> hard, hard yes. balance. No, okay. so, so, but, you know, let's say that that's, you know, what you proclaim. I want you to proclaim that, you know, proclaim your destiny, man, and own that. And then the way we're going to make it happen is what? No excuses. I'm going to make it happen. Right? So let's everybody put our pro pro uh, proclamation of our destiny uh, for the month of November in, into the group me and, uh, and let's have let's have a great month this month, guys. All right. All right.